Hey friends, welcome back to your weekend edition of Hot News, where we're gonna go over the hottest tech news that happened this week as a quick little recap so that you don't have to necessarily sit through five episodes, you can sit through just this one. It's my extra little special dose of goodness for you. So let's get into this week in news and talk about the hottest tech news. NVIDIA had a gigantic week with their GTC conference happening, but one of the key things that they talked about was potentially the fact that they're gonna collaborate with Intel when it comes to using their fabrication facilities in order to make some of the stuff that they're aspiring to make, especially potentially in the CPU department, which we'll get into in a second. But NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong coming out and saying that they've been working closely with Intel for a long time. They share their roadmap with them. They've shared their roadmap with AMD. AMD knows their secrets, the industry has just learned how to work in the way where everybody knows what's going on behind the scenes. And so they actually don't mind potentially using Intel to make some of their stuff because Intel already knows what's coming down the pipeline anyways. Why well, I say pipeline like that? But what is coming down NVIDIA's pipeline is the massive Grace CPU that they announced at GTC this week, 144 cores, one terabyte per second of bandwidth. It's a massive CPU that actually combines two separate CPUs together using an interface link, which allows allows them to connect over NVIDIA's new NVLink, which can deliver up to 900 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. It's a crazy chip that can actually fuel a lot of the super server stuff that they're doing with all of the super computing. It looks to be like a game changer for them, but also what seems to be more of a game changer is their H100 GPU, which is expected to be 80 billion transistors, have a completely new architecture and be running on 80 gigabytes of HBM3 memory. It's going to be massive, made on TSMC's four nanometer setup and it's going to come in two different varieties, either the SXM5 model or the PCI Express 5.0 model, which then changes how the GPU is actually set up. Up to 700 watts of TDP on that with 80 gigabytes of HBM3, a 5,120 bit bus, 17,000 roughly CUDA cores. This is going to be a massive chip with them saying that it could potentially be up to six times faster than their previous A100 data center chip. NVIDIA really coming out with crazy things this past week, but they also came out on their investor day and say that, hey, gamers are paying more than ever to us for GPUs. We kind of already knew this when it came to the street prices that are going on. People are paying more than ever at retailers and also at the open market websites like eBay. But NVIDIA is saying that the average gamer is spending more than $300 over the previous generation to buy the RTX 30 series because NVIDIA has jacked up the price. The 3090 goes for $1,500. The 2080 Ti went for $1,200. So there you go. That's the $300 increase right there. People really wanting the 30 series and willing to spend as much as they possibly can for it. But in case you want a more affordable GPU, we talked about this week how GPU prices are indeed falling. We talked, we saw how they're falling in Australia, the falling in the open eBay market. I've been watching PC flippers saying that they're clearing out their inventory of GPUs so they don't get stuck with high price GPUs that they purchased previously. And also we're finding that some retailers are actually listing things like the 6500 XT 35% below MSRP. You could potentially get a 6500 XT power color GPU for 170 euro, which is a significant price decline even from just a few weeks ago. But graphics card prices do indeed look to be falling down. And it does look like the security of a lot of major companies seems to have fallen down. Microsoft being the latest victim of Lapsus, who's the hacker organization that hacked Nvidia and Samsung with a whole bunch of stuff going on there with it being found out that they have 37 gigabytes of uncompressed data of Microsoft stuff, including 90% of the source code of Bing, which I made the joke that it's just Google, and it is, ha ha ha. I made the joke twice, it's still funny. Bing is just Google, but worse. Can you give me a giggle? Uh -huh. Thank you. I needed the validation. But in good news, I guess, for the, you know, the major companies who have security breaches, Lapsus looks to have been apprehended by London City Police, with them arresting seven different people aged 16 to 21 with their connections to Lapsus, with the one of the leaders being known to have been about 16 years old with $14 million of Bitcoin from all the hacking that's going on. But video game hacking, something that plagued people who played Elden Ring this week, especially if you do multiplayer, there was a little glitch that 
allowed it so that if somebody invaded your world, it would make it so that they could cause it so that you fall through the map and then the game crashes. And then when you get back in the game, it's just an infinite death loop where you die over and over and over and over and over and not in the way that Elden Ring normally makes you die over and over and over and over. But from software and Bandai Namco have fixed it as of yesterday. And as of yesterday is when I would like an M1 Ultra Max Studio, but I can't necessarily afford one right now. But the Max Studio was disassembled this week. We got a good look at the interior, especially the gigantic size of the M1 Ultra chip. It also looks like the SSD that's on the inside is replaceable, not upgradable because the, the Apple software locks it, but uh, it, it, you can at least service it, which is fine, I guess. And we can at least service our fantasies of The Witcher because CD Projekt Red came out with an announcement this week about the next saga coming in The Witcher series for video games with them releasing this teaser of The Witcher, A New Saga Begins. It's going to be based on Unreal Engine 5 instead of the Red Engine with a close collaboration with Epic Games, but then also CD Projekt Red confirming that the medallion here is a lynx, which likely means that this is going to follow the Witcher School of the Cat as opposed to the Witcher School of the Wolf that's been prominent in the Netflix TV series as well as the Witcher 3 video game that everybody seems to know and love. And in case you want to play potentially the next generation one on your Chromebook, that might happen. Maybe, probably not, because Steam is now actually being rolled out to Chromebooks. Only seven Chromebooks out there. Google talked about this at their Game Developer Summit keynote about how they wanted to get Steam involved, and it's still an alpha build, and it's only supported on these seven Chromebooks that are listed right here, and it only supports a few games that are out there, not all of them. However, just stay tuned for a video on that. We actually picked up one of them so that we could test this over on UFD Tech. So uh, just, just get ready for Chrome, Steam on Chromebook video over there, and let's get ready for AMD's FSR 2.0. You don't even have to be ready. It's already being rolled out. I believe it's already in God of War, I think I saw it, and then also Cyberpunk FSR 2.0 looking to be a better version of FSR 1.0, which is out there, which allows you to get a good looking image at faster frame rate without sacrificing too much quality, and it's being supported by all GPUs out there, but the optimal ones are an RX 590 and above and a GTX 1070 and above, but one of the big things that AMD did announce was that if a game already has DLSS 2.0 implemented, it should only take three days for developers to actually implement FSR 2.0, thereby shortening the pipeline for video gamers to get the best video gameness that they could get for their video games. And I am gonna skedaddle to get back to to, to start uh, what did, charity stream might still be going on potentially. I don't know because it's a subathon and we set the stream for four hours and every donation increases the time. So just go go check our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. See if I'm still alive. If I am, tell me that twin sent you that so like I can know that, that you know this video came out while I'm sleep deprived and we're, we're, we're still going in the stream. Let me know. And if not, just just toss me a prime sub on Twitch anyways. OK, great. See you. See you on Monday. Oh, wait, no, we got meme review coming tomorrow. Hey, we got we got changes coming on the hot news channel. You excited? You should be. Bingo boingo.